Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder presents The Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kern, Tom Conrad, Alan Reed, Jill Walker, the sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of The Voice of Bugs Bunny. Hey. What's up, Doc? <laughs> yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show, with Mel playing his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. <laughs> Tonight is certainly an important one in the life of our hero, Mel Blank, for it marks the date that Mel and his girlfriend, Betty Colby, have been engaged for four years. Other young couples remember their dates, too, in Mel Blank's little town, for in the Adams household, we hear Susan Adams saying, Henry, what are these lovely roses for? Well, the first time we met, you wore roses in your hair. And in the Davis household, we hear Shirley Davis saying, Roy, what is this beautiful orchid for? Well, the first time we met, you wore an orchid on your dress. And in Mel Blanc's fix-it shop, where Mel and Betty have met, Betty is saying, Mel, what are these pretty handkerchiefs for? Don't you remember, Betty? The first time we met, I had a cold. <laughs> Betty was very happy that Mel remembered, but she got a much bigger thrill when Mel showed her... Mel, a wedding ring. Yours, Betty. Ain't it a beaut? Five diamonds. Oh, Mel, it's gorgeous. Of course, you really can't tell just from this picture. Oh. <laughs> Where am I going to get it? Betty, you can have the whole catalog right now. <laughs> of course, I won't buy the ring until I get your father's consent. and That's what worries me. Oh, Mel, stop worrying. Father will surely give his consent. You think he dislikes you because he always says, Mel Blank, I'll break every bone in your body. Well, he doesn't say it because he's a chiropractor. <laughs> oh, gosh, married... Mel, I get goose pimples every time I think about it. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Betty, remember how we first met? Yes. Yeah. You came over to my house to fix the antenna on the roof. Yeah. The birds were singing, but I didn't hear them. The sun was shining, but I didn't see it. You didn't? No, don't you remember I fell off the roof and was unconscious for two hours? <laughs> And remember how the next week we went for our first walk in the park? And you carved our initials in the trees. What a kick I got out of it. I got a kick out of it, too, from the park attendant. <laughs> you know something, Mel? I've always looked forward to the day when I'll be Mrs. Blank. Gosh, Betty, you can't be Mrs. Blank. That's my mother's name. <laughs> it belongs to her. Well, I can still have it. No, you can't. It's my dear old mother's. Oh, stop being ridiculous, Mel. Blank. I will not. And if you don't like it, you can... Gosh, Betty, the way we're acting, you'd think we were already married. Oh, oh Mel, here comes Father. Now, 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 be calm. Yeah. And remember, just tell him you want to marry me. All right, Betty. Hello, Betty. <clears throat> Hello, Mel. Mr. Colby, I want to marry you. I, I, I mean... Now, look here, you nincompoop. I was expecting this today. For four years, you've been asking me if you can marry Betty, and for four years, I've given you the horse laugh. Doesn't that prove something? Yes, that you're a horse. <laughs> I mean... That... Father, I want to get married. After all, how long can I go on just being engaged? Yeah, pretty soon people will be saying, she's lovely, she's engaged, she's 65. <laughs> Look at my girlfriend, Kay Gibbs. Kay's been married five times already. Poor girl. Always a bride and never a bridesmaid. <laughs> See what I mean, Betty? Oh, I'm not going to waste my time here any longer. Betty, I don't mind your getting married, but not to this lazy, stupid, nonsensical, idiotic... Gosh, she used to have a much bigger vocabulary than that. <laughs> oh, this is awful, Betty. It looks like I'll never get to be your husband. I won't be able to do the little things for you. You won't be able to run errands for me? I won't be able to wash dishes. You won't be able to buy things for me? Spend money on me? Yeah. <laughs> what am I crying about? Maybe I'm better off single. <laughs> hey, uh, wipe your eyes, Betty. Here comes Professor Pochnick, the piano teacher. Hello, Betty. Hello, Mel. What's the matter? You're looking so terrible. Well, Professor, Mr. Colby said I can't marry Betty. Well, that's too bad, but remember, Mel, there are plenty of fish in the ocean. Professor, I don't want to marry a fish. <laughs> Gosh, I'm miserable. I will never forget how miserable I was when my wife double-crossed me. 
Well, how do you know she did that, Professor? Well, now, you know in every house there are towels marked his and hers? Yeah. One day I came home and found one marked Joe. <laughs> and then, then two weeks later, the same thing. Another towel marked Joe? No, Joe himself. <laughs> But it didn't bother me. What she looked like shouldn't happen to a dog. Uh, you mean a dog? No, a dog. She had webbed feet. <laughs> now, maybe it's better you don't get married. I don't say that, Professor. Betty and I love each other. She wants to be part of me, and I want to be part of her. We want to be part of each other. Mm. It's going to be very confusing getting dressed in the morning. <laughs> Betty, suppose you told your father you were going to get married and brought around all your fellows for your father to pick out tonight. Well, what good would that do? Oh, I got great idea. We get three very stupid, ignorant fellows to make Mel look good by comparison. <laughs> Why, that's wonderful. And all we have to do is get three fellows more stupid than Mel. Well, we could get... Uh, well, we could get... Um... Professor, you got any other ideas? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. We could get Zuki to be one of your boyfriends, Betty, and I myself could be the other two fellas. Now, that's wonderful. And it wouldn't be hard for you to act stupid. I mean, uh, you can disguise yourself. Oh, oh I'm going to run and tell Father. Oh, okay, Betty, so long. Oh, Pochnik, that's a wonderful idea. How did you ever think of it? I don't know, Mel. I just took one lock look at you and it came to me like that. <laughs> Teeth that sparkle and dazzle, a breath that's fresh and sweet, then try Colgate Tooth Powder. For the new all purpose Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. Yes, this new all purpose tooth powder produces an amazingly rich, active foam that's marvelously effective. Every time you brush your teeth with this new all purpose Colgate Tooth Powder, your whole mouth feels clean, sweet, fresh, your teeth regain their natural sparkle. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten that Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And as for cleaning, you can depend on Colgate Tooth Powder revealing the natural brilliance of your teeth, giving them that pearly, polished feeling. Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you could expect or ask of a dentifrice and does it beautifully. Try Colgate Tooth Powder today for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now, the sportsman with Victor Miller in the orchestra, and it's a good day. Happy am I. Happy am I. Happy am I. Every time I feel the spirit, well, I know it's going to be a good day. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day. For moving along, yes, it's a good day. How could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Hallelujah, brother. Happy am I? Yes, it's a good, good day. For shining your shoes, and it's a good, good day. For losing the blues. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. Cause it's a good day from morning till night. I said to the sun, good morning, sun. Mel Blanc. 
Mel and Betty have hatched a plan whereby they hope to convince Mr. Colby that Mel is good enough to marry Betty. Mel and Zookie are going to pretend to be very stupid suitors, thereby hoping to make the real Mel look good by comparison. Mel's a little worried about the whole thing, but despite that, he's still able to concentrate on his problems in the fix-it shop. Right now, he's tackling the job of adjusting a prized gun which a worried customer has brought to him. Def deftly, his expert hands probe the intricate mechanism. Gosh, pretty soon I'll have to go up there and act stupid. With nimble fingers, he dismantles and inspects the pieces. I hope Zuki plays his part right. Now, having checked the firing pin, cleared the barrel and adjusted the sights, he carefully raises the gun to his shoulder and presses the trigger. <laughs> there you are, Sonny. Your pop gun's all fixed. <laughs> no, you don't have to pay me. Keep the bubble gum. <laughs> well, if it isn't my lodge president, Mr. Cushing. Hello, Mel. <laughs> Greetings, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Say, uh, didn't I see you in Murphy's Barn Grill last night with a zombie? Mel, I wasn't even out with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, mighty potentate? You seem out of breath. Well, I am, Mel. I'm all pooped out. <laughs> you see, I've been shopping with my wife. Well, what'd she buy? Well, she bought one of those sealskin outfits. You know, sealskin coat, sealskin hat, sealskin bag. How does she look? I don't know, Mel. Every time she opens her mouth, I feel like throwing her a fish. <laughs> what a woman. Oh, you're prejudiced, mighty potentate. I saw Mrs. Cushing the other day, and she was very nice, smiling at everyone. That's those new teeth she bought. They're two sizes too large. <laughs> I thought she already had one set. Mel, my wife's mouth goes so much, she has to have two sets. They work in 12-hour shifts. <laughs> it's awful. I can't even get any sleep. No sleep? That's right. All night long, out of sheer force of habit, they sit on the night table and talk to each other. <laughs> Oh, your wife doesn't talk a lot, does she? Ha! <laughs> Mel, you've heard of people who carry a conversation? Well, my wife will ship it anywhere you want. Yadda, da, yadda, da, yadda. It's like being married to the Railway Express. Rain, sleet, or snow, nothing stops her. Well, why don't you give her a hint? Uh, get a set of those monkeys. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Oh, Mel, we've got them. You know what happens when my wife starts to talk? The monkeys all put their hands over their ears? No, they all get up and go home. <laughs> I don't know why I'm standing here telling you all this. It's just that I've got no one to talk to. Gosh, it's, it's getting late. I, I gotta go. What's the matter, Mel? What you... <laughs> well, you see, Betty and I want to get married. You want to get married? Mel, why ruin a beautiful friendship? <laughs> Well, that's the point, mighty potentate. Betty's father won't even let us get hitched. Hitched? Mel, take my advice. Before marriage, it's hitched. After the marriage, it's hung. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't happen to my marriage. Betty's as sweet as sugar. All right, get married. Then watch how sugar is rationed. <laughs> well, good luck up at the Colby house, Mel. I gotta be going now. Uh, where are you going? Well, Mel, I can do one or two things. I can go to the movies and see It's a Wonderful Life, or I can go home and see the part they cut out of the picture. <laughs> Goodbye, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Well, now to get to the Colby house. Gosh, this is going to be tough. Acting like two other stupid fellas in love with Betty. If I act too stupid, Mr. Colby is liable to get suspicious and think it's me. I wonder how Zuki is making out. Well, Betty, it's 8.45. None of your suitors have arrived yet. Oh, they will, Father. And tonight you'll have to select one of them. I'm tired of being single. Oh, I'll get that, Father. Oh, uh, hello, Betty. Uh, hello, Mr. Co... 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 Daddy. Snooky, you. You want to marry Betty? Uh, why not? Uh, she's a girl, and I'm a... 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 Give me a chance. I'll think of something. Snooky, why do you want to marry Betty? Well, uh, because she's intelligent. Uh, 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 she's a good cook. Uh, 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 
Oh, well, she's very refer... Uh, refer... Uh, refer... Uh, she's, uh... She's, uh... She's, uh... <laughs> Zuki, is that the only reason? Oh, oh no. Uh, 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 Betty and I have big plans. Uh, by, uh, by the time we're married, six months, uh, we, we want to have uh, four... Uh, four uh, Zuki! Uh, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, Zuki! Can't we have even one dog? <laughs> and, and then we're going to have uh, ch uh, uh, children, too. Gee, Betty, just think. If your father lets us get married... In a couple of years, we'll have a, a little boy. Gee, I can hear him calling us now. Papa! <laughs> Well, Zuki, before I let you marry Betty, uh, what are your qualifications? Oh, well, I've got a college degree. I've got a lot of money. I've got a lot of stocks in the meat bun. I've got a lot of money. 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 Well, that lets me out. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, Betty, that's quite a surprise to me, Zuki, wanting to marry you. Father, you may have a lot of surprises tonight. Oh, it must be another young man. I'll get it. Howdy, bub. Think the frost will affect the potatoes in Idaho this year? <laughs> Say, what's that I smell? <laughs> you ever hear a bluegrass perfume? <laughs> Is that the bluegrass you're wearing? Nope. This is the stuff that makes the bluegrass grow. <laughs> well, hi, Betty. <laughs> hey, did you tell you, Paul, how much I love you? Well, not yet, but I will. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Tex. Where are you from? Mississippi. <laughs> and why do you call yourself Tex? Better than being called Miss. <laughs> Gosh, Betty, you sure look pretty tonight. Just like the cover girl on this month's Corn Cob Chronicle. <laughs> Miss Golden Bantam of 19 and 47. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tex. Well, Paul, I mean, Father, can we get married? Uh, just a second, uh, Tex. I have to find out more about you. What about your family? Well, I'm mighty glad you asked. I happen to have this picture in my pocket. There's my mom and Paul and the kids. <laughs> Sam, Jake, Luke, Tom, Fred, Zeke, Rose. Shall I make some tea? Yes. Bill, Pete, <laughs> John, Lula, Bella, Judy. Cream or lemon? Both. Will, Ike, Bruce, Lloyd, Sandy, Robert, and not too sweet. A Stuart, Shirley, Dottie, Stephen, Mitchell. Is that all? No, two lumps. Uh, Henry, Donald, Gerald, Al, and over here in the corner, their adopted son, Max. <laughs> Seventeen brothers and fifteen sisters. How come so many kids in the family? Well, it seems the first two was boys, and ever since then, Ma and Pa have been trying to even out the score. <laughs> well, so long, Betty. Let me know if your Pa said yes, huh? Well, <clears throat> Betty, to put it mildly, I'm a bit surprised at your choice. Well, you see, Father, Mel isn't so bad. Well, well this must be another suitor. I'll open the door. That's uh, Betty Culp you live here. Oh, hello, Betty. Just a second. I'm not Betty. Oh, you're my glad. <laughs> uh, Mr. Colby, before I accept your daughter in marriage, uh, uh, I want to know just what you have to offer. What I have to offer? <laughs> Come on, now, that was my question. <laughs> After all, you're not talking to a moron, you know. There's only one like me in the entire country. Harvard will verify that. Betty, do you want to marry this person? Yes, duh, if you'll have me. <laughs> Young man, what do you do for a living? Oh, people are always offering me jobs. Yesterday I got a job emptying garbage pails, but I had to quit. Why? Well, in two hours my pockets were filled to the brim. <laughs> well, last week I worked in a carnival. 
I got paid double. What did you do? But they was using my head to dodge baseballs. Well, why should they pay you double? They used the other side for a dart game. <laughs> now, just a second. Your stupidity seemed a little familiar. Uh, oh, I gotta go now. So long, Betty. <laughs> Betty, I'm completely flabbergasted. You're a hasty man. Frankly, I don't know who to choose for you to marry now. Hello, Betty. Hello, Mr. Colby, sir. Nice to see you, sir. You're looking fine, sir. Have a sir cigar. I mean, have a cigar, sir. Ah, Mel, my boy. Earlier today, you asked me whether you could marry Betty. Well, I'm happy to say... Mr. It... Colby, not really. Yes, sir. <laughs> Betty, you can get married. Any one of the other three. Oh, don't be so downhearted. I still love you. Thanks, Betty. Someday I'll make your father give us consent. Anyway, now we've had four lovely years together. That's right, Betty. We've had four. Now, would you care to try for eight? Use Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. It cleans your teeth, makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Colgate tooth powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you can ask of a dentifrice. It makes an amazing foam, lively, fast-working, penetrating. As soon as this new all-purpose Colgate tooth powder gets foaming in your mouth, things happen. It cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. In seven cases out of ten, it's actually been proved that Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleaning your teeth, Colgate tooth powder gives thrilling results. For it cleans your teeth so beautifully that it brings out their full natural brilliance. That's why Colgate tooth powder is called the all-purpose dentifrice. So for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet, try Colgate tooth powder. Use Colgate tooth powder. This is Bud Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to Dulling Soap Film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. There is a worldwide shortage of fats and oils. So won't you please save every drop of fat that you can. Put it in a tin and turn it in. Your butcher will gladly pay you a high price for it. Remember, Mel Blanc at the same time every Tuesday night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.